high arm. Okay, one of those jobs I was kept putting off, but eventually got around to. Um, this is the uh, rear view camera. It's not really a mirror as such, doesn't have any, well, I suppose it has a mild amount of reflectiveness. Oh, look, there's my ugly head. Um, this is designed obviously to go over an existing mirror. So it doesn't really have any <coughs> screw mounts in the back, which is kind of annoying. There's nowhere to screw something in. It has these kind of rubberized thing to go over it, which is not the nicest thing in the world, but for the moment I could print something and maybe glue it to the back. But uh, right for now, we've done, uh, we've basically done this design, uh, which incorporates the rubberized mountings. We'll see how long they last, <clears throat> but I can unbolt it and change that. Uh, I've printed the brackets that mount, obviously, to the cage at the moment, um, only because I want to make sure the mirror is in my the best viewing position, should we say, and least amount of distraction for me. So uh, temporarily, I'm just printing these brackets. I'll definitely print this piece because it's all plastic there anyway. Uh, we sunk some hexagons into the plastic so we can just uh, suck a nut into there <coughs> but effectively will these brackets will eventually be a quarter inch thick billet uh, but only once I'm dead happy with the position of the mirror so for the moment this is how it is that's our um, cage obviously in red and that's our cover so we've printed this and I do have now unfortunately have to weld to the cage I know I know I've got to grind off some of my powder coating it will hurt, <coughs> but you know, eventually it's going to have to happen somewhere. Uh, we have now uh, drilled, and this is the other 3D printed piece. Obviously, it's like just basically makes for a nice mount for the keypad. Also, has four holes, there's only two lights at the moment for the interior lights. So, when we turn the interior lights on, then basically, as well as the two footwell lights, we'll have four LEDs shining down inside here. So. <clears throat> how bright they are in my face I don't know but realistically I'm not going to drive around the interior lights on so um, so keypad that's now uh, yeah happy about that this will be covered as will obviously be the dash around as obviously will be the backing to this that obviously stays billet <clears throat> so we have that already when I pull the body off basically I'm going to print one more of these because uh, I've made a slight correction to the side so this doesn't quite go all the way to the roof. <clears throat> so I'm going to print another one of those uh, that'll have the correct slots in it for the mounts for the mirror, which obviously is going to sit there. Why, why I pointed that out, I don't know. <clears throat> so uh, progress on that front. Um, a lot of frustration with 3D printing, but you know, we've got somewhere. Um, obviously, we have, have our lovely stainless steel 3d printed tailpipe um a minor admission when i drilled the two holes in the original uh prototype <coughs> diffuser and gave it to chris to weld it he said the right hand hole was down by about two millimeters which was a bit of a shit um so when he made the pipes basically one was slightly lower than the other i said oh don't worry about that. that'll be fine i'll make up for it and when it came uh, yeah, I hated it because they were uneven. <clears throat> so this pipe here, which is obviously the opposite one to that one, didn't fit exactly where that hole should be in here. Now the pipes just stick through about sort of 10, 12 millimeters. And then obviously we do <clears throat> the, the form takes the rest of it up. It doesn't touch it as such. Uh, we have put a piece of phenolic board or built a CNC, a, a phenolic spacer, should we say, just to try and aid any temperature this might get up to to here. But once we, uh, sorry, once we uh, Cerakote the rest of the exhaust, we will also Cerakote this and the back spacer as well. So basically all of that will get the same color treatment. Uh, we could polish this up. It is tempting to get it tumble polished and then something else, but I don't know yet. We'll see, we'll see on that front. <clears throat> so uh, that's mounted, uh, happy with that. Um, we were designing, or still are designing a, like a receptor here, because obviously once the rear clip goes up, the scoop ends here. We need something to basically collect the air and push it where we want. We could push it round towards the turbos, towards the 
<clears throat> bring some fresh air into here. We could use it also to push down to the coolers. Obviously being a turbocharged engine, it's kind of, you know, really designed this is for NA. So I can literally just go in straight into an air box like a McLaren F1 type of thing, sit it up and then just literally have all the eight trumpets sat in a lovely pressurized box. But <clears throat> um, uh, this is turbo. So <clears throat> the rear scoop we're just gonna use for venting. So I'm printing a piece at the moment that bolts up to this bulkhead that then transfers that shape into two three inch round pipes. And fingers crossed this one goes well. <laughs> just about see it in here. And I'm slowly morphing from the shape at the top there to two three inch round pipes. Oh, uh, did I throw you in way? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Here's one we paid it, who made earlier, or should we say we failed earlier? So, realistically, uh, yeah, 3D printing it's fun when it works, bloody pain in the ass when it's not. So basically, as you can see this, basically the air is going to get ducted into here and then it's going to morph from those square shapes into round, kind of opposite to what the exhaust did. And from round to square, this will rectangular. This will go from rectangular to round. And then we'll run two three-inch pipes. My possibility at the moment is probably to run both to, to both the coolers <coughs> and just to get some more airflow through here. Um, I have got a mindful uh, or a mind to put two uh, vents, should we say, in the top of the rear clip. Present winning bid, should we say, at the moment is basically a, a flap that will open. Um, so it'll open when you, the ground speed goes too low to exit air. But once you get any form of speed up, I obviously don't need it quite so much and I don't want the extra drag. I want to try and keep the, the air on the body so basically those flaps will automatically close uh, with a PWM signal using basically like a robotic um, 12 volt activated motor. It's a, a servo, sorry, it's like a 12 volt servo you see in robots and a lot in RC cars and stuff. So we're going to activate two of those with that. So basically when the ignition's off or when I power down or air temperature in the back, they'll close or open, depending on whether also the logic to it yet we have to, we still have to play with. Um, so yeah, we've done that. Uh, I can't remember what I mentioned last time or not. We do, we have actually welded the vents onto here now. So that, uh, this is the vent that comes from the motor. So basically uh, we have this pipe here that comes from the motor. There's an omniturn valve in that. So if it just produce vacuum on tick over, it doesn't suck it out of here, or it doesn't, uh, doesn't suck it out of here. So if it blows, which probably will do in the turbos, it'll blow into here. And then the main vent from here, then it will go back now and we'll go to the breather tank, which we finished mounting today. So this is basically a, a fluid knockout tank with a vent in here and some <coughs> basically foam in there. Uh, so this is going to be our vent. So we've made a clamp bracket. There goes a nut <clears throat> and a clamp bracket for that and a quarter inch plate because I was scared I didn't want this wobbling around. So I've gone from an eighth to a quarter plate there to make that solid mount. Uh, similar to how we've kind of mounted the fuel regulator last time. So same thing, clamp on mount, quarter inch thick plate and this is not going to move at all. So there'll be no vibration in there. Strangely, this uh, pulse, surge, pulse, Pull stamper, there you go. This pull stamper doesn't like being mounted solid to the engine. Mm, don't know why, but it said in the instructions not to mount it to the fuel rail, so that's what we've done. <coughs> so I threw the exhaust back on, literally just so I could line up that pipe. Uh, we have actually finished lining the pipe up. <sighs> we've finished lining the pipe up. Uh, we've got an extra bit of pipe from Chris and basically ground the, uh, cut this leg of the, the foot off. So if this was original piece at the back there, cut that leg off and ground this pipe. So that, that exits straight through the middle of that um, uh, rear tip. So now I just got to weld it. And I kind of forgot, I don't have any weld, I don't have any bungs so I could uh, sanitary weld and put argon on the inside of this. I do have my dual flow 
regulator so I can put argon into it, but I ain't got the bungs. And I could print some, but I'm printing something else at the moment, so I'll have to wait. So <clears throat> I've just tacked it for now, test fitted it, put that back on, and that comes perfectly in the middle of that uh, exhaust tip, so I'm happy with that. But uh, the one weld by me, so yes, by all means, you can point that out when you see me. <clears throat> Why isn't that one as good as the rest? Yes, <clears throat> I'm an amateur in comparison to a sheer professional. And this is the third attempt at this piece, so needless to say, yes. I shall be getting bamboo labs. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Note to anybody that's buying a printer, don't ever buy a cheap little thing. Buy a thousand dollars worth of bamboo labs or Persa, or Prusa, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. <clears throat> That's a lot. Um, you can save yourself a lot of frustration, let's say the least, especially for the, the bigger parts. Uh, there is one more piece that I've uh, designed, basically redesigned the front part of the scoop. So the this section here, I wasn't particularly happy with this front section of the scoop. So I've changed it now to basically a, um, an elongated, sort of rounded sided uh, top. I kind of want the hell to call that, more like an ellipse. I reshaped that into ellipse in CAD and drawn that shape. I profiled this, I profiled the curve of the roof, old school, no 3D scan, and I've redesigned the front of this. So we're going to print a new front piece of that uh, so that that will be a little more interesting shape there, should we say. But, <clears throat> yeah, should have printed it the last couple of days, but printing is not fun when it's not going well, anyway. Okay, so, yeah, that's, that's the kind of little updates, should we say. Um, a lot of stupid little stuff. Now that's done, that, once that pipe is welded, I'll cut it to the length that I want it because it's just, it's just extended too long at the moment. And then we're going to take the full system, I say, to get it to Cerakoted. Um, probably won't get that back until, I would guess, the new year. <clears throat> uh, Christmas being as is, uh, but uh, that's the last big thing to get. Oh no, sorry, we've got to take these off as well and get those, get the front and rear frames uh, powder coated. So we'll get some cerakoting coating done and hopefully we'll get the powder coating done as well before, well, basically before the end of next month. And then we can finalise build all this up, which is great. And I might even get round to um, making up the plug leads. <clears throat> Anyway, that's, uh, that's the story so far. So lots of CAD designing, lots of pieces being printed, but they're all stuff that really needed to be done to build the road car. So uh, Merry Christmas to you all. I uh, hope you're all well and uh, see you in the new year. <laughs>